today we are going to talk about a tiny but supremely capable streaming active loudspeaker from PSB called the Alpha IQ. But this isn't going to be your typical review video because these PSB have caused me to ask, what are the essential features of a streaming active loudspeaker selling for under say 2K in 2023 slash 2024? This episode is brought to you by Marantz, now celebrating its 70th anniversary. Click the link in the show notes for more information. Welcome back everybody. The PSB Alpha IQ is an active speaker with built-in amplifiers, DA conversion and streaming. And they sell for 1400 euros a pair, which is almost the same price as an iPhone 15 Pro Max. And lest this message gets lost in all the tech talk, a pair of Alpha IQ is a complete hi-fi system in a box and a very small box at that. I've had headphones arrive here in larger packages than this. Yep, the Alpha IQ are tiny. Now active doesn't necessarily mean that the DACs and the amps sit inside the speaker cabinets, although they do here. It means that those DACs and amplifiers sit after the crossover in the signal path and we get one DAC and one amp per driver. And the streaming module, which is also built in here, doesn't come from a third party like Stream Unlimited, but is in fact developed in-house by Blue Sound because PSB and Blue Sound share the same parent company and that's called Lenbrook. And we can think of the Alpha IQ as effectively active loudspeakers that contain a Blue Sound node. Which brings us to our first essential feature for streaming active loudspeakers. And that's an outstanding, outstanding software experience. Not just an okay app that gets the job done, but one that can rival Sonos in its ease of use. Now, the BlueOS app is available for PC, Mac, Android, and iOS, just like the Sonos app. And it recently enjoyed a visual overhaul in its step up to version four. And after the Alpha IQ arrived at my door, I was up and running with wirelessly streaming music within 10 minutes of pulling the box cutter from the kitchen drawer. And that's because the Blue OS app automatically discovers the two Alpha IQ. It asked for my Wi-Fi network credentials. It injected those credentials into the primary loudspeaker and then rebooted both. And then it updated each speaker's firmware to the latest version because firmware updates come over the air as we might expect. And once up and running, we can say hello to Bluetooth, to Spotify Connect, to Tidal Connect, to Apple AirPlay 2, and Rune Ready. And numerous lesser known streaming services are rolled into the Blue OS app itself. The only real sort of notable omission here is Google Chromecast, which is I think being specified in increasingly more streaming products. Now, talking of notable emissions, let's talk about something that I think can no longer be considered an optional extra by streaming speaker manufacturers or streaming amplifier manufacturers. And that's an HDMI arc socket or an HDMI eARC socket, which is our second essential feature today. Now speakers of this size and with this kind of functionality are likely to be adopted by people who want to improve their TV sound quality, but who feel let down by the sound quality of a soundbar, but who also don't want a visually imposing hi-fi system. They don't want the hi-fi system to dominate or take over their lounge room essentially. And this is why you'll hear me beating the drum for HDMI ARC. I think it is essential in products of this type and especially at this price point. Now, why do I think HDMI ARC is so essential? Well, mainly because so many people understand that it moves the volume and the power controls away from our, I guess, whatever we're doing with our hi-fi system and towards whatever remote control we use to control our TV. 
when you say HDMI ARC or eARC, most people know that that means you can put down the Hi-Fi remote and use your TV remote for everything. So in my case, that's an Apple TV 4K's remote control. Now, many of us know that a pair of streaming active speakers like the Alpha IQ will offer a wider soundstage and a more impactful sound than any soundbar on the planet. But I don't think that will be quite enough to convince those who care more about aesthetics than sound quality. Now, my inner minimalist, that's a mouthful to say, really digs the Alpha IQ's small cabinet size. I really like the touch sensitive control strip on the top of the primary loudspeaker that gives us play pause and volume up and down. And I also really like that PSB now give us a choice of five color finishes. I think that's a really smart touch. And as you can see from this video, I went for tangerine yellow. But you can also get something called Dutch orange, midnight blue, and then there's matte white and matte black for people with more conservative tastes than me, for example. Now for turntable hookups, we get a pair of RCAs on the back of the primary loudspeaker that talks directly to an internal MM phono stage. And there's also a line level three and a half mil aux input, which is useful if you wanna connect on a, the analog output of a CD player, or you've already got a phono stage, you wanna connect that to the Alpha IQ. Now curiously, and this is a bit of a, yeah, it's a little bit of a niggle of mine, there's no USB input here. So anyone wanting to use the PSB on an office desktop will need to use an interceding USB SPDIF converter. So a box that takes the USB out of their computer, turns it into TOSLINK, and then feeds that into the back of the primary loudspeaker, which is over this shoulder, uh, of the Alpha IQ. Now one affordable solution for that is the Topping D10S, which we've covered on this channel numerous times before. It sells for 99 euros. However, I didn't use that because I saved the Toslink input on the Alpha IQ for a Shanling ET3 CD transport, which you can probably just see, yeah, that little black box behind me there on my sideboard. Now this all brings us to our third essential feature for active loudspeakers, and that is custom stands with cable management. Now the Alpha IQ's primary loudspeaker will spew forth with cable vomit when fully loaded with HDMI, analog, and TOSLINK, not to mention the power cable, because it's got to get mains power from the wall. And we have to dig out another 349 euros for the matching AST25 stands that weigh almost five kilos each. And they put the tweeter at ear height, which is really important, and they run all the cables to the floor through their central column. A side note here for physical media fans, you'll need a long set of interconnects or even a long TOSLINK cable if your phono stage or CD player or CD transport sits at a similar height to the speaker. Because in my case, my CD transport is on the low board, right? So I have to get a cable that will go down to the floor and then up through the central column of the stand. Now I don't have a TOSLINK cable currently long enough to do that. Now for those who don't want to stream over Wi-Fi, there's also an ethernet socket on the back of the primary loudspeaker, but there is no hardwired interlink available for connecting the primary loudspeaker to the secondary loudspeaker. It is Wi-Fi only. And in fact, that Wi-Fi connection is VPN. So I guess it's a VPN tunnel from the primary to the secondary. And so, yeah, there is no cable alternative here. So you have to kind of suck it up really. But I had no issues with the connection between the primary speaker and the secondary loudspeaker, not a single one. And in fact, the Blue OS app reports on the strength of the Wi-Fi connection between the two speakers. And for me, with the speakers sitting two meters apart in my six meter by five meter room, I got a good reading. And as I said, no hint of an audible dropout during many, many hours of listening. However, there is a niggle here with the stands in that they resonate at 385 Hertz.
What about sound quality? Perhaps this too should be considered an essential feature of streaming active loudspeakers. However, I think that sound quality here is table stakes. It's an essential feature by default. You don't go into the loudspeaker game without it. And if you don't have it, you won't survive long. So many other manufacturers make great sounding loudspeakers, so you have to keep up. And a new product that doesn't cut it on sound quality will crash and burn within months. And I can think of one streaming active loudspeaker that came to market a couple of years ago that I didn't think sounded all that good. And after a year, it was nowhere to be seen. And no, I'm not saying what it was because that would be unfair to the manufacturer, I think. Now the Alpha IQ were designed, at least in part, by Paul Barton. And we might see Paul Barton as Canada's answer to Andrew Jones. He's been designing speakers for over 50 years. And I'm not talking about DIY models built in his garage, but speakers that have sold in great number through hi-fi retail channels. So inside each Alpha IQ, we find a three quarter inch aluminum dome tweeter driven by a 30 watt class D amplifier. And then there's also a four inch mid bass driver driven by a 60 watt Class D amplifier. And if the double mention of Class D triggers some kind of outdated allergy or outdated thinking in you, please know that this PSB mini monitor does not sound cold or sterile or anything like that. And if hearing the words four inch mid bass driver causes you to assume that this mini stand mount is only for the smallest of rooms, think again. Now the crossover between the two drivers here has been implemented by Barton and his team in DSP with a rear firing reflex port extending the bass response of each speaker. And PSB's online spec says that the Alpha IQ are already three dB down at 64 Hertz. But in my six meter by five meter room, to me, they seem to go lower. Now here's the measurement taken at the listening position with Room EQ Wizard. And as you can see, they do go a lot lower in room. So another way of looking at this is that whatever this PSB loudspeaker lacks in bass reach, they more than make up for in dynamic bass punch. The Alpha IQ is not the weak sounding noisemaker that kind of I expected it might be when it first arrived. And reporting on sound quality without a subwoofer in play, we know that like many stand mount speakers of this size, the PSB's imaging is second to none. And the soundstage and the players that sort of sit on it remain sort of visually detached from the speakers. They don't seem to be glued to the speakers or the sounds don't seem to be emanating directly from the speakers, but from this kind of, I guess, phantom center channel. And micro dynamics here are another strong point. So too is the top end smoothness that lends the Alpha IQ a, a sense of ease. This is kind of actually a laid back sounding speaker. It's not a loudspeaker that barks or yaps <laughs> like a small dog. And that brings us to our fifth essential streaming active speaker feature. And I'm talking about a subwoofer output. And that's for those who want to reclaim the sub bass that these mini PSB completely miss. And we can add a subwoofer via the RCA socket on the back of the primary loudspeaker. And the Blue OS software, as it does in a Blue Sound node or a power node, takes care of the crossover point. So now I'm showing you what the in-room response of these speakers looks like with a KEF KC62 subwoofer added and crossed over at 80 Hertz. Now the audible improvement leans closer to night and day than the graph would suggest because the graph, yeah, it's pretty similar to without a sub. And that might be because adding a subwoofer does more than just extend the base reach of the system. Adding a subwoofer can smooth out the frequency response in the low end. And in the case of the Alpha IQ, the Blue OS base management system 
Also, high pass filters the main, so the, the little yellow speakers, for a slightly cleaner sounding mid range. Now, what about side by side comparisons? Well, I can't tell you how the Alpha IQ compare to Kef's LSX2, as I no longer have them here. But I do still have Klipsch's The Sevens, which sell for similar cashola to the PSB. Now the Klipsch also do HDMI arc, they also do MM Phono, but they suffer badly from the cable vomit problem because Klipsch doesn't make dedicated stands for them. And in terms of sound quality, the PSB aren't as big or as bold sounding as the Sevens nor are they as macro dynamically charged, but you might not need a sub with the Klipsch, and I kind of think you do with the PSB. However, the Alpha IQ are a streaming active loudspeaker. They don't rely on a cabled interlink, and they sound far more refined and tonally satisfying than Klipsch's The Sevens. So it really is a case of swings and roundabouts. And if the Sevens are what we might call <laughs> And if we refer, <laughs> and if we refer somewhat ridiculously to the sevens as a whole barbecued chicken, then the PSB are a high quality chocolate mousse. That really is how sonically different they are. Night and day? Yeah, pretty much. So if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe below and maybe watch another video that I'll put up here. And if you're watching this video on Patreon, you'll be seeing it early without the ads and with a bloopers reel at the end. And my Patreon also features playlists for every video we've ever made, about three or four years worth now. And that will save you having to use Shazam or having to hit pause in the middle of a video and write down the music that I'm talking about. So if you'll consider supporting me over on Patreon, even if it's just for one month to buy me a cup of coffee or something, that would be absolutely terrific. Thank you very much for watching.